what really is freedom because we all have freedom in the sense that i get to choose is that really freedom when i'm only given the choice between certain options but it just speaks and touches and pulls the strings of choice and autonomy and self-acceptance self-identity so strongly hello everyone and welcome back to the close friends podcast i'm katie valentina and today we're going to be discussing the body of work actually actually, actually no I'm only going to be discussing the fig tree analogy from the Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, not the entire novel. And the reason why I'm discussing it is because, well, at the end of last episode, which was all about like how much I want to travel the world before I turn 40, I was like yapping on about how much like I feel like this podcast has lost its substance. Like the first few episodes, I was talking about like feminism and things that matter. And then as it went on, like I just started talking about things that whatever comes to my mind that day, I'm like, let me make a podcast episode about this like why was I there was a whole segment where I was talking about how much I hate Valentine's Day I don't know why you would want to listen to that but anyway here we are talking about the fig tree analogy if you don't know what this is it's from Sylvia Plath's novel which is all about well some people call it an autobiography some people call it a memoir but it does follow like the lens of this main character Esther Greenwood who but like the events that happen in the novel is like loosely based on not even Lucy, like very, very closely resembles the events that happen in Sylvia's life. So it's like not also biography, but not really because it's following a character. If that makes sense, the fig tree analogy itself is this whole like metaphor about the choices that you have to make in life and how it's so difficult, like the complexity of choosing one career path, the complexity of choosing one thing for yourself when there's so much that you can gain and so much you can take from life and I felt so compelled to speak about it because recently I literally like last weekend especially I think I cried for about an hour about how much I just don't know what I want to do with my life so a little quick bit about me before we get into the deep dive and analysis is um I'm currently a med student this is my uni room if you couldn't tell and I love medicine I'm very passionate about medicine I worked very very hard to get into med school so that I could do medicine but the thing is like I also have such a creative mind and there's so many creative things that I want to do like for example there's this podcast then I also enjoy like those are other creative things I'm not going to dive into it now because you probably don't want to hear that but I always find myself sitting and wondering like is this really what I'm meant to be doing And like, how do you know what it is that you're actually meant to be doing? Like, it really scares me sometimes because I'm like, what if I'm making the wrong life decisions? So if you've never read the fig tree analogy, I'm going to read it to you now. I was, I was going to summarize it, but I was kind of just like, no, let me just read it. Like, you might want to, like, if you've never heard it, like, it's short, like, it's short. Okay, bear with me. Oh my gosh. Also, I forgot, I completely forgot to mention, this is the first ever episode of the podcast that's a video episode so if you're listening on spotify like you can actually go to youtube and see my face and see like my setup like and if you're on youtube this is a spotify podcast by the way with many more episodes if you want to go and listen to them pierre the fig tree analogy by sylvia plath i saw my life branching out before me like the green fig tree in the story from the tip of every branch like a fat purple fig a wonderful future beckoned and winked one fig was a husband and a happy home and children, and another fig. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll start again. I saw my life branching out before me like the green fig tree in the story. From the tip of every branch, like a fat purple fig, a wonderful future beckoned and winked. One fig was a husband and a happy home and children, and another fig was a famous poet, and another fig was a brilliant prof- professor, and another fig was E.G., the amazing editor. And another fig was Europe and Africa and South America. And another fig was Constantine and Socrates and Attila. And a pack of other lovers with queer names and offbeat professions. And another fig was an Olympic lady crew champion. And beyond and above these things were figs, were many more figs I couldn't quite make out. I saw myself sitting in the crotch of this fig tree, starving to death, just because I couldn't make up my mind which of these figs I would choose. I wanted each and every one of them, but choosing one meant losing all the rest. And as I sat there, unable to decide, the figs began to wrinkle and go black, and one by one, they plopped to the ground at my feet. Like, (laughs) I can't explain to you how reading this poem, well, it's not a poem, this passage from this novel changed the trajectory of my entire life. It, It changed the trajectory of my entire life. Like, 
I, that's dramatic, but also not really. The first time I heard it was probably only like four months ago. Like it wasn't a thing where I heard it when I was 13 and then like, I, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't something like that. Like I did only read it or hear about it like four or five months ago. But when I did hear about it, I was really like, oh my gosh, she's me. She's actually me. Whatever, but because this is the first time I'd ever heard anyone like speak, like verbalize these thoughts that I was having all the time. I was literally stunned. I was too stunned to speak. I was shocked. I was shocked. And then I went like, as I usually do, and I just researched, like, I only heard this passage. So that's when I found out it came from Sylvia's novel. And obviously I know who Sylvia Plath is because like iconic author like everyone knows who she is but i had never read one of her books so there's a few different metaphorical meanings that people kind of have for the poem i'm going to tell you how i think about it and then i'm going to tell you some like other thoughts i've had so obviously she's sitting in this fig tree there's so many different like career choices she's speaking about not even just career choices but like paths of life that she looks out of and eventually she's unable to choose which one and all of them die in front of her it's like if i choose one i can't have the other but by choosing none of them i get none and it's more that not that she's like choosing actively to not pick one but that she is questioning for so long which one to do that she ends up not doing any and i kind of understand that as like well exactly what it is to be honest with you like if you can't choose if you spend too long deciding what you want to do with your life you end up watching life just pass you by and you haven't done any of them or if you pick the wrong path then you have all of these other dreams that just die in front of you but But there's this whole idea because obviously as the novel goes on like we find out that the character was actually just like really hungry and delirious at the time so like i was listening to someone like analyze it and they were saying that like oh no like the fig trees weren't actually like falling and dying and shriveling and she wasn't actually contemplating life like she was just hungry and once she ate she felt fine and i was like really but then i thought about it and i was like that kind of makes sense you know when you're in like a really really like you're already down and then you start spiraling like you start having existential crisis because you're already feeling down but as soon as you just like eat something or do something to like fill you up and make you feel better all of a sudden like the intersexual crisis well it doesn't just disappear but you kind of look back and you're like wait those thoughts I was having were actually irrational and so I kind of think that relates that relates because I've come to realize very recently that whilst it feels like I don't have any control in my life at all at the end of the day it is very much my life and all the decisions I make are very much down to me like yes I don't really have any say in like how the things I do pan out like that's like divine like I can't do anything about that but I do have control over my own actions and what I do so I feel like the whole thing of like oh no after she went to go like eat and you know she wasn't being like delirious anymore the whole fig tree crisis kind of disappeared it kind of makes sense that like once you take a step back and you analyze like yes it's very overwhelming that i have all of these dreams and all of these choices that don't really align at all like yes that's overwhelming but once i take a step back and realize actually no like i can do maybe not all of these things but most of these things if i really just take a step back breathe and relax and think about it it becomes more manageable to understand if that makes sense because a lot of the times when i speak there's a lot going on in my brain so I don't really understand how my sentences are forming so if that didn't make sense to you I apologize I think it's really really interesting talking about like existential crises crises and the life pressures that there are to make like, these these life altering decisions at all times especially so young I feel like in the society that we're in you're kind of told you need to know what you want to do and who you want to be like at this age because you only have this amount of time to do it like you don't have time to there's no time for kerfuffle and there really isn't like when I was 10 years old or yeah when I was 10 years old I sat the 11 plus if you are not in the UK or if you're just not aware because I realize that a lot of people aren't actually aware of the 11 plus even if they do live in the UK but to go to a grammar school in the UK which are just like selective schools usually like were built in like the 1500s or something um you have to take an exam to get into it um I sat the 11 plus when I was 10 because I was told 
that that was literally like no i wasn't given a choice i thought that everyone had to do that i'm very glad that my parents did make me do that but at the end of the day like i don't really think it would have changed much like, I, don't, I don't really know man like i was only 10 years old like children don't need to be sitting exams that's i mean that's a conversation for another day but children don't need to be sitting exams they just don't um but yeah i sat the 11 plus when i was 10 years old because that like this is what this is what I mean like all I've ever known my entire life is you have to work hard to achieve what you want to do and I'm so lucky to have such like inspiring parents who do work so hard every single day like every single day my parents work so hard which is so inspiring so when I was younger like that's all I knew like I sat this exam I was told you have to go to the the good grammar school so you can be intelligent and work hard and d- succeed in life even though like I'm in uni with many people who did not go to grammar schools who did not sit the 11 plus were all here together doing the same medical degree so like did it really have much effect no (laughs) sorry it was just a bunch of unnecessary stress um but then we had the gcses worked really hard for the gcses but when you're taking your gcses no no you have to pick your gcse options in year nine and in year nine they're like make sure you don't pick the wrong thing because you have to think about what you want to be when you're older and I kind of decided when I was in year seven we had a whole careers fair and the careers fair we had to create an entire like powerpoint on the career that we wanted to do when we were older universities that could take us for that career or degrees or things we could study for that career this is when we are 11 years old we they, like my school made us do that I'm not mad about it because I think it's important to think about what you want to do with your life but at that age of 11 years old I did not know what I wanted to do and then because I had gotten glasses that year and I went to the optometrist to get my glasses I just decided that's what I wanted to do in my life like I wanted to be an optometrist and so I did my powerpoint on optometry and then I kind of decided that was going to be my career path like that was it like I decided that was going to be what I wanted to do and so I made my entire powerpoint on that and for the next five years I was going to be an optometrist now behind the scenes there were so many other things that I wanted to do I'm not going to speak too much on that because I feel like it's so like cringe telling people like if, like your dreams and stuff that you haven't achieved <laughs> like that's so that's so cringe but behind the scenes there were things that I wanted to do like creative wise creatively so many things that I wanted to do anyway Anyway, in year 11 I had an epiphany I was struggling a lot with my mental health at the time and I watched this one (laughs) k-drama sorry 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 this is gonna sound crazy this is gonna sound wild to say that watching a k-drama made me pick my career but I watched a k-drama it's okay to not be okay and it's I'm not gonna go into the plot of it's okay to not be okay but it's around psychiatry and I kind of pieced the two together and I was like I really want to do this with my life like I really want to help people struggling with mental things um and so I had an epiphany I had an epiphany I was like med school is five year a five-year course which is a long time but optometry is a four-year course so only adding an extra year and I can do this whole other career with a which to me there's so many more options in medicine like I don't even want to be a psychiatrist anymore I don't know what I want to do because it's such a broad career that like I could literally do anything but then I changed my mind and I wanted to do medicine but still at this point there's all these like background careers that I want to do like and there's so many things like I had done I was doing performing arts so I did performing arts I did acting singing I did multiple styles of dance I was signed to an agency I had a YouTube channel at the time I mean I still do now but I I took like two years where I wasn't posting but at this point in time I would post actually actually post on my YouTube channel um yeah there were there were so many other things that I was doing like at one point I wanted to go to musical theater university like no university at all because everyone at my dance school were going to like all these dance colleges and performing arts colleges like, all of the big ones like Mount View and stuff like in London so there was a time where I too really wanted to do that i didn't even want to go to university i was looking at mount view applications on audition processes can this is what i mean like i do these things on a whim and then i come back to reality and i'm like hold on hold on hold on you're going to university babe relax anyway so end of year 11 i decided i want to be a doctor and then 
it was time to move on to sixth form and I don't think which sixth form you go to really matters that much but it, it is still like an important thing like what subjects do I do you're picking these subjects based on the career that you want to do I'm lucky that I knew that I wanted to do medicine by year 11 but a lot of people don't know what they want to do when they're only 15 16 years old like it's such a big thing to think about and I think even throughout sixth form I decided to do IB instead of A levels. IB is six subjects, A levels is three. So I went the um, more difficult route, I guess, in my opinion. I don't know. I never did A levels, so I can't compare. But I think it's like most people can agree that IB is significantly harder than A levels. And I already knew that I wanted to do medicine. So I could have just done A levels, done two subjects, and I mean, done three subjects and called it a day but no instead I decided, <laughs> instead I decided to do IB and do six subjects like there was no reasoning behind that but I did that and I feel like cool everyone's like joining their different societies like politics society med society like everyone's like got their life figured out and so have I so it seems yet there's still all of these things in the back of my head like like I I don't actually know if this is what I want like it feels like it's what I want and I want it to be what I want but that doesn't actually mean that it's what I want if that makes sense so then first of all to year 13 it was sending off our applications everybody knows my med journey I have a whole YouTube video on my med journey um so I'm not going to delve into that so much but I feel like even through that period of time and I was applying I went back and forth then at one point I wanted to open up a dance company I made a whole business plan whole like did all the finances and everything showed it to my parents they were like yeah sure um because I was planning on taking a gap year I even went to London actually my parents don't know this my parents don't know this I went to London I was like looking out different venues <laughs> I did this by myself at how old was I it, oh yeah it was only last summer yeah I was still um 18 I just went around looking at different venues and then I went home I think I told my mum I was going to the shops but I l literally went to central London I don't live near central London <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry mum and now here I am fast forward sitting in my university room and I'm in med school praise god because that like this was a hard journey and I'm en route to becoming a doctor. And I find it very hard, actually. I feel like I struggle with imposter syndrome a lot, where I feel like I shouldn't be here in the sense that, like, it was such a hard journey, and the fact that I'm actually here is, like, quite shocking. But also in the sense that, like, there's so many people who, like, know this is all they want to do with their life. Like, they want to become a doctor. This is all they want. And, like, I know deep down in my heart that it's not all I want. Like, I know deep down in my heart I've never said that out loud like I've said that for the first time and I know it's gonna sound wild because I do like <laughs> just hear me out and understand me for a sec I do want to be a doctor I do want to do medicine that's why I worked so hard to do it and that's why even when I got rejections I was like no sir no sir sign me up sign me up like, so that's why I feel like I struggle with like the imposter syndrome so much because I'm like this is what I want to do but at the same time it's like actually not like it's not only like I don't only want to do this I want to do so much but all the other things that I want to do kind of feel like out of my control and out of my capabilities and unrealistic and it's like help me help me like literally help me what do I do that's why I feel like I relate to this character Esther Greenwood so much not just in this passage but in the entire novel because you know she's this girl in her final year of college she's moved to New York she's working as an intern in a fashion magazine and like doing this new thing but she's still like grappling with all these other thoughts that are like consuming her basically I mean I don't relate to Esther Greenwood fully because it is very much like a tragic character and yeah it's actually quite sad so like not I don't relate to everything but that specific aspect of her life I relate to I really want to discuss like the idea of freedom versus conformity that the passage of fig tree analogy kind of hints at because well that's what's just really interesting like to talk about a lot of the times we find ourselves like just going through the motions of life I feel like that's what I've done like obviously gone to school come to uni and I'm gonna have a career after and I feel like that's literally like the path that society is that society's led up for us 
when I was younger I used to always think like why can't we just be like cavemen again and just run around in the garden like I literally did not understand society like I literally like obviously I do now to an extent like obviously I understand it better now but when I was younger I was actually like why can't I just go play outside why do I have to do my homework it would really weigh on my mind because I was literally just like but why and then I think of like you know the bible story and like the garden of Eden and how like they just lived amongst like the plants and the animals I was literally just like when did society change from this when and why (laughs) like I used to really actually question that and um sorry that's off topic but the idea of like conformity like we conform to like these literal like societal norms not just like in like the structure of life like get a job then you retire when you're 65 and reminisce on childhood like not even just that structure but also just like the things that you're meant to do like as a woman I'm meant to get married and have children start a family those are all things that I really actually do want to do so I'm not bashing that like I actually do I actually do want to do that but I'm just saying like that's what's expected of me as a woman like have it start a household be a household lady and all of that jazz like for men like be a provider get the job get the bag and provide for your family like all of that stuff that's just like what you're meant to do but why is that's not what we have to do do you know what I mean like what really is freedom because we all have freedom in the sense that I get to choose what career I want to do I get to choose who I marry I get to choose when I have kids I get to choose those things but is that really freedom when I'm only given the choice between certain options are you hearing me are you hearing what I'm saying I also feel like as a kid like freedom low-key doesn't exist like at all um because you don't really actually have a say there's some things that children shouldn't have a say in because you're a child and you're just like if it was down to me when I was a child I would play outside all the time and never work a day in my life see why children aren't allowed to have decisions like there's freedom but it's freedom within bounds Bounds. it's freedom within certain constraints it's freedom within well it's not really freedom at all is it I feel like there's a lot of battle between personal wants and personal needs and also the influences of not just society but of our friends and our family and of the media and of our peers like we have freedom and we have choice but we have to think about how it affects other people and how it looks on other people like I know if I just decided to do all of the things that I really 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 want to do that it wouldn't it probably wouldn't even work out in my own best interest but also it would affect like my family it would affect my friends and things like that like so we have freedom and we have choices but like it's not re- like we, sometimes we're not really given much choice if that makes sense uh there's a like there's a theme of like self-discovery in the novel kind of as like I feel like Esther kind of finds this sort of like self acceptance and like shape like shaping her own reality she starts to like battle that inner turmoil and kind of, like she kind of finds some sort of understanding of it all and I think that there's so much empowerment in realizing that you do actually have autonomy over things. Like it feels like you don't a lot of the time. Like it feels like you're kind of like life is living you instead of you living your life. But there, it, you do have power and you do have autonomy over your life and over the decisions that you make and over what you choose to do with your life. And you have to remember that you only have one life. Well, whatever you believe in. And I don't want to spend my life doing something that I don't want to do just because this person says it's best for me or that person says it's best for me but then at the same time I don't want to do something that I want to do and then flop and then all of a sudden everyone's like I told you so (laughs) like it's so difficult out here it's so difficult I feel like I've gone through especially in university I've become such a different person like I feel like at sixth form I didn't really have to think about who I was as a person because like I'm just a girl but then coming to uni I mean there's still that sense of like everyone's still growing up like everyone like we're all technically adults in like the technical real world but we're all still very sheltered in our university environment like we're all still like my 
degree i mean my year group we range between like the ages of like 18 and 24 and to me like we're all just still like little kids like not little kids but we're just all still trying to figure out the world and figure out life and like all of that jazz i've also kind of realized that like time isn't running out like time like I always feel like I'm battling against time like I need to have achieved this by this age and done this by that age and I feel like the media makes us feel like that as well where you you're seeing all of these people like I'm only 18 years old and I'm a millionaire and I'm this and I'm that and you're like please 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 I'm just trying to bedrock on TikTok like you don't need to be shoving this down my throat at this moment in time and I feel like because we're so exposed to things like that and we're so exposed to people telling us that we have to do this by now we need to have made up our mind by now we're, we constantly feel under pressure like we're running out of time like yes and no like yes like we only have one life and you'll notice that like the more you spend doing like things that aren't really like serving you I guess the more it seems like you're wasting your life at the same time you actually do have so much life and one of my favorite youtubers um nikki demar she's 28 right and she's just moved back into her parents home um after like an entire whirlwind of the last 10 years and i've literally been watching her since i was really young so it's kind of crazy like watching her grow up and her life change as well anyway um but yeah she's just moved back into her parents house and she's kind of like starting over her life like she's like by coastal living in la doing like following her dreams or whatever but then she lives with her family after her life didn't really go as she had planned when she was younger and i really realized like oh my gosh i literally can just change my mind at a later date like it's not like i'm bound to the decisions that i make now like yes they have a big impact in my life yes everything i'm doing now will determine how like the the course of my life but it doesn't mean that i can't go back and it doesn't mean that i can't say actually no like i don't want to do that I actually want to do this instead actually no this that and the other like my parents aren't gonna kick me out well I hope not fingers crossed but my parents are the type of parents are just like kick me out and be like sorry you're actually 18 now go and live life like they wouldn't do that what I'm trying to say is there's always a room for a second chance even a third chance and a fourth chance and a fifth chance and I remember when I was like in year seven I won like the prize giving award and at the prize giving ceremony we had like this lady come in and she was like the head of some like big company but like previously she'd been like a teacher and a head teacher and then she'd done this and then she'd done that but like now she's the head of this big company and I was like oh wow your career has changed so much like, your life has changed so much like everything that you've done like wow that's really interesting like I really just thought that I had to pick one thing and then that's the only thing that I did like no you can do so many other things I know so many um like doctors actually who told me that they've done so many other careers before they decided to become a doctor and it's like well yeah like obviously you can always go back to you can always change course if that makes sense there are postgraduate courses for a reason because people decide to change their minds also for example my biggest example is like victoria monet victoria monet like just won i think three grammys after she's had such a long career she said her career started when she was like 13 or something i think and she's only just won her grammys now and like she has a kid and i think she's in her 30s or late 20s i should probably research before i start talking about things but um yeah like she just won her first grammys and three at that now so far into her career and it's like she must have been thinking all this time like is she doing the right thing is she is this the right career path for her is she making the wrong decision but this was the right decision for her this was her cho this was her given career path her timeline just looked different to everyone else and things can change things can change and things aren't always the way it seems and also i think a lot about how my life isn't running on my timeline it's running on god's timeline and i'm not always going to see the end point or see exactly where i am in the timeline but there is something bigger and better than me that i just don't really see yet at the moment in time at this moment in time so the victory analogy conclusion i really really love this piece of work and how like it's a contemporary piece of literature that will live on in my heart forever like i've never felt so like i've never consumed literature so wholly before i really haven't I really haven't like 
I've never read something in been like before and it's not even that what she's saying itself is that like crazy because it's not but it's the fact that she said it that's crazy to me because I never heard anyone speak about that before and it was literally what I was thinking I need you to understand that at the moment that I first heard of this passage or first read it that's exactly how I was feeling at the time so it just spoke literally directly to me I was like wow she really wrote this for me and about me like wow like I love you Sylvia but it just speaks and touches and pulls the strings of choice and autonomy and self-acceptance self-identity so strongly in just such a short little piece of work like I'm not glazing, I promise. It's just excellent. It's fantastic, even. So, to end today's episode, I just really wanted to, like, conclude that whilst I've been having existential crises and been battling with whether the choices I'm making, the decisions I'm making, the paths I'm taking are the right ones for me, it's... I've been called to understand that there's always a second path there's always a third, fourth and fifth path, fifth chance, I can always change my mind, I can always, I I do have autonomy over what I want to do and although it might not seem like it, although we have to make some sacrifices because life isn't like rose coloured all the time, at the end of the day you can always bounce back from things that maybe don't go to plan or don't go your way and you can always choose to follow your heart lift your head up queen your tiara is falling so i really hope you guys enjoy today's podcast episode this is a first video episode i'm literally so happy i know i know it started off like kind of rocky because this is what always happens with every single episode i start off like confused on what to talk about and then as we go on like everything like goes towards me and it just like free flow like do you know what I mean so yeah it's been c- kind of difficult but I'm really glad that I put out this episode because it really means a lot to me and I hope that it resonates with any of you guys listening if it does don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel subscribe subscribe to the YouTube channel follow the podcast on Spotify close friends with Kato Valentina I don't know if like there's there's no like tag for Spotify so just type in close friends with Kato Valentina you'll be able to find it and rate it five stars please rate it five stars and uh yeah that's it i'll see you guys next sunday for a brand new episode also 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 don't forget to find me on my other social media platforms i'm at kato valentino on literally everything and yeah i love you so much and i'll see you next sunday for a brand new episode bye